We've talked about the new link methods coming in .NET 6, but as Robert pointed out in our comments, there's also some new overloads coming to existing link methods. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. Uh, in today's episode, we're gonna take a look at some of the new parameters that are available on those link methods that you know and love from before. So what do you got for us? Well, we're gonna continue our little example from last time uh, where we had a list of people that we're creating using our GenFu library that just gives us a, a list of randomly generated here, 50 different people or uh, person class instances. They just have a first name, last name and age. And we're iterating over that list and uh, chunking it into sizes of 10. We're calling those teams and then outputting those teams and determining who the leader is. And we're gonna continue in our uh, previous example of trying to assign that leader in a very ageist way. And let's say that, so before we get into what these overloads are, I'm gonna show what the problem is that they're actually trying to solve by adding these overloads. Uh, and this is a common pattern that I've seen often in, in my code and other people's code in .NET. Uh, but let's say that for some reason, uh, we wanted to pick our leader to be somebody who's between the age of 20 and 25. So the, the oldest person in that range of age 20 to 25. So I might do something like say in my team, I'm gonna order by descending age. And then I'm gonna say, give me the first or default uh, person. Well, I might say first person, uh, but the problem with that is that if, I'll just comment out the old approach of taking the oldest person to be our leader. Um, so in this case, we, if there isn't a person, oh, sorry. First where the, I forgot the rule that I had just invented where the age is say greater than or equal to 20 and less than or equal to 25. So they're in that range of age 20 to 25. Uh, if there is no one in my team, age 20 to 25, this is actually just gonna throw an exception now. And if I run this, I expect that in my terminal output here, I'll probably get an exception because yeah, they're, this particular team doesn't have anybody in that age range. Okay, so that doesn't work very well. And that's why this first or default exists. So first or default, that's been in there since I think the beginning of Link, whenever that was introduced into .NET, ages and ages ago. Uh, it will return null if there isn't a match that uh, satisfies our expression that we passed into this first method. And the compiler warns me here, this may be null and so again, now if I run this, it's still gonna crash because I'm trying to access the first name of that leader. So here it is crashing with a null reference exception. Um, so then the pattern that you would see is you would say, well, if leader is not equal to null, then we do this. Else we would say something like console.write line. Your team will be led by the default leader. So somebody is assigned to lead their teams. Why is it complaining about right line here? It's not a correct squiggly line in this case. I think it just hasn't caught up with the code changes I've made. Okay, so now this will run successfully and you will see that some of my teams have leaders uh, and some of them don't. Some of them are saying that they will be uh, led by the default leader. Okay, so that's a little bit messy. Um, there's a lot of code there to kind of describe what it is that I'm trying to do. So with these new default, uh, the new overloads for all of these or default link methods do is they allow you the option to specify what the default value should be. So instead of just always returning null, you can return an actual instance of an object. So up here I can say var default leader equals a new person or the first name equals default last name equals leader and they are that perfect leadership age of 24.
And now what I can do is just say default leader is my default value that I return if we can't find someone who matches that expression. And then I can get rid of all of this cruft of the checking if it's null and having other logic to execute. So it really simplifies this code here. Now we should have a mixture of the default leader and actual leaders that were found on the team. So this is this overload exists, as I said, for all of the uh, or default methods. So the last or default, first or default, single or default, and element at or default. And I think they're pretty handy. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely a pattern that I see in my own code base. I do something, check for null, and then carry yeah. on with some default values. So having this, this feels like one of those things where I'm like, ah, how has this not always existed? Yeah, exactly. So it's, mm -hmm. it's definitely a nice addition. I just looked it up and done at 3.5 with which would have had the link releases in it was released in 2002. So we've been doing this for 20 years. We've been doing this <laughs> default check. Ooh. So this is time. <laughs> yeah. Wow, which is a lot of code out there that uses that. Now. I know. Like this just this takes six lines of code out of well, whatever, three lines of code out of every uh pretty much every code base out there, I'm sure. There's one other interesting new uh, thing here and there's a syntax that I, this is new to me I, I haven't used it at all before uh, apparently it's been there since done at three or something but uh, with this element at for example um, I can get the second person in my list by using this element at overload mm -hmm. or this element at method uh, but it has these overloads that allow me to do like this index syntax. So I can do like the second last element in the in that collection. Oh, really? Yeah, this is new to me. I think we're gonna have to explore this a little further in, uh, huh. in another episode, but this is a, a new syntax that's now supported with element at. Uh, it didn't support this indexing syntax before and it does now. So it's another new thing in link. Huh. That's interesting because that's, that's like not an overload of that that I've used before. That must have been like a a language change to support that, right? Yeah. So it's this index is the the parameter type for it. Oh, so it must just be a shortcut for creating an index. So I assume I can also say new index, and with There's the index, for it. I can specify to oh, and then from and equals true, for true. example. Huh, that's actually super handy. Like one of the things that I really like about Python is the way that they do array indexing. And I, I miss it more in JavaScript than I do in .NET, but I, it would still be nice to have it there. So one other thing that's new is around, um, so we've all probably used this .take before where you can do like, you know, take five elements from the list or up to five elements, and then you might do something like say skip five and take five. Uh, but the, you know what, Dave? I've always felt like that's really lacking. I feel like it's just missing <laughs> like something to simplify that just a little bit. Yeah. So this take operator has an overload, or take uh, method has an overload now that accepts a range. So you can use these range operators. Uh, if I wanted to do elements five through ten, I can uh, select them that way. Or if I wanted to take everything after index five or I think also before index five. These are all valid, uh, that one isn't. Uh, but these are all valid uh, ways of selecting items now. So I can go and let's just print this out so that we can see that it's working. So I'm gonna print out the names of um, members five and up in that list. Uh, index is five and up in that list. I should get that output twice now, the full team and then the last five people in there. So here's my last team with 10 people on it. And then those last one, two, three, four, five people should match what was output here. I gotta say, it's kind of funny um, seeing some of the names in there because I actually know who they're referring to because once <laughs> upon a time in Gen Fu, I actually typed all those names in by hand, a, a lot of them anyways, so yeah. 
Edwards is in there. Any guesses where that came from? <laughs> I don't know. Was it a Damien at all, or it might have? It might have been a Damien. Might have been a Damien. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you everybody for joining us, and I suspect we will be recording another video shortly on <laughs> the other syntaxes that we missed here. Uh, so we'll see everybody on next week's episode, where we may or may not cover that. Bye. Bye. Awesome. Remember to like, comment, and share. We'll see you next time.